at this place in history, we're on top of Mount Philo with the executive director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. I'm excited to talk about Vermont's first state park. We are. And so Vermont Historical Society just published a new book, Secrets of Mount Philo, and the author, Judy Chaves, is going to join us and show us some of the hidden gems of Mount Philo. We have records, written records of people hiking on Mount Philo that go way back. There are records of people coming up during the Revolutionary War, during the War of 1812, to use the summit as an outlook to see whether ships were coming back and forth on Lake Champlain to sort of gauge how various battles were going. In the 1840s, there was a group that ascended for a rapture experience, the second coming. So people have been hiking on Mount Philo for quite a while. In fact, the, um, the open rocks, what we consider sort of the main viewpoint now, was probably kept intentionally clear by indigenous people for possibly thousands of years to use it as an outlook. So right now we're standing in one of the old original viewpoints that was built in 1901. It's alongside the original carriage road that right now is sort of a footpath. But these railings are original railings established in 1901. And the viewpoints and the carriage road were part of, sort of they were amenities that were part of the Mount Philo Inn. Vermont was being um, marketed as a very pastoral landscape, um, unlike the Adirondacks or the White Mountains, which were marketing themselves as very rugged. So this um, couple that owned the mountain, James and Francis Humphreys, eventually James died in 1914, and in 1924, Francis gave the mountain to the state. They clearly both loved this mountain, and this was the ultimate act of love. It was this generous donation of the mountain to the state to be used as a park. In 1924, when the donation was made, there was no such thing as a state park in Vermont. There were state forests. They date back to about 1910. So they had to come up with a new category for this donation of land that was specifically for recreation and they called it a state forest park. So in that way, Mount Philo in 1924 became the first state park. Judy, in your book, it's it titled Secrets of Mount yes. Philo. So there's a lot of really cool pieces of history that aren't generally known to the public. Can you no. take us to see some of that? Well, we're standing in one of them right now. Very few people know about. There's a lookout right here, and then there's one a little bit further up that way. There are other secret places, even more secret than this, hidden away in the woods alongside the road that many, many, I mean, most people just go right by. They haven't a clue. For example, there's a concrete block that's hidden away in the woods that's actually the only, as far as I know, the only material evidence of one of the gazebos that was built alongside the carriage road. Hidden away in the woods up in the summit area, there are fireplaces that were built in the 1930s by the Civilian Conservation Corps. Um, nobody knows about those. So there are many of these places. In fact, there are places, um, there are elements of the mountain that I still haven't figured out. So there are secrets that still need to be <laughs> figured out. So Amanda, let's go check out Judy's book, Secrets of Mount Philo. You can see everything she talked about and more with really great hikes. At this place in history.